back to eccentric nature and my tea of the day. Oh yeah. Today I've got uh, peppermint and rose. Figured I'd do a rose one since I just did the benefits of rose. So what I really want to talk about today is blending herbs, uh, specifically uh, fresh herbs. And when I'm talking about these, you have the major four, which are the mints, particularly peppermint, rosemary, thyme, and sage. And those are really considered stronger herbs that uh, if you overbrew them at all, they can get a little bit bitter or too strong. Peppermint out of those four is probably the least likely to get bitter, but it is still possible if you accidentally add in some of the stems or something along those lines that it can get that way. Same thing can be said for any uh, herbal roots you're using, like dandelion root or any other roots that you actually can use from the herbs themselves. So. Uh, there are certain ones that you can use just the stems or even the roots out of them. And definitely if you're brewing roots, they can easily get much more bitter. So, and because they're always stronger when you're talking about the roots. So anything that's that strong, you only want to have to be a smaller percentage of your tea overall, if you're going to taste the blend properly, right? So. With this case where I've got the peppermint and the rose, rose being a very light flavor. I could, you know, you could blend just the rose by itself and have a very, very light taste, kind of like a white tea, where you aren't getting much of anything out of it other than the fragrance of it. And so um, it's very important that when you're putting them together that you generally take at least two to three times more of the lighter herb compared to the heftier herb. So in this case, if I've got the peppermint, I'm gonna, you, you'd say maybe use um, one teaspoon of peppermint to three teaspoons of rose, essentially, um, if you really wanna taste the rose properly. If you just wanna have it as an accent flavor, that's fine. You can just put some in there and just have it accent the flavor. But if you want to taste the balance between the flavors, then you really need to add a lot more of the lighter one. Otherwise, it's gonna get overwhelmed by the stronger herb and sage rosemary are definitely going to do that to you i think more than any others those two in particular can easily overwhelm any other herb thyme oregano peppermint all are in that same area where they can do that to you just not quite as much but it's definitely something to consider if you're uh, looking at blending herbs and just creating your own out of your own garden or if you've managed to just buy some uh, even dry ones in this case, where if you just buy dried peppermint and you've just buy uh, dry dried rose, um, or you know any of the light, other lighter ones or flowers. Um, I mean, you can say basil's. Uh, I don't tend to use as much in tea, but you can use some like Tulsi basil and the cinnamon basil. Um, they're very good for tea still. And they consider those a little bit more on the lighter side as well. Yeah, I mean, overall, the main thing that you want to consider is just unless it's an accent flavor, always have a lot more of it in there in order to, to balance it out because yeah, peppermint is so strong. It's just like how it's invasive for a garden. It can be invasive for the tea as well. So you want to just many things out, even it out to make it work better. Now this blend in particular, I love it. I love having these two together. It also works really good with uh, Lavender in there as well, so peppermint, lavender, and rose is a nice blend as well. And that's generally how I'll work it. Um, with most of my blends like this, is I like to take one stronger one and then add a couple of lighter flavors in there just to see what happens. Sometimes I'll just be like, let's take some of this, some of that, throw a little bit of everything in there, and it'll still taste great. So the main thing is, is you can just have fun plitting, mixing and matching and playing around, especially if you aren't taking one of these major ones that are really strong that can easily get over brewed. Um, because when you're talking sage and you're talking uh, rosemary in particular, three to five minutes really is your max before they start getting bitter in brew time. The other ones, peppermint essentially could go longer and so could uh, Time a little bit. Time can very much get uh, that woody overtaste after five minutes. Uh, so it's seven minutes to tops on time. Oregano, kind of the same way in that range as well. Three to seven minutes max. Um, it can go a touch longer, uh, but I wouldn't go too far with it, you know? Um, but any of the other ones, when you're, uh, all the other uh, herbs you have, the flowers especially, 
almost any flower except for something like hibiscus that has a really strong fruity flavor, they can all go uh, a lot longer on their brew time. So that's why you have to have that balance in there because um, the longer it can handle a brew time, it means generally it means is the lighter the flavor is or the um, easier it is to get overwhelmed by a stronger herb. So just, just things to consider if you're playing around with teas and if you've got some stuff you want to just experiment and throw in together. I'm going to stop there with that because I got some shout outs I want to do. Woo, let's shout it out. Shout out number one. This one's going out to Perkins Life 4. Told you I'd do this a little while back. It's just it's been a while since I've done some shout outs. So Perkins Life 4. Here you go. Here's your shout out. And these guys, they like to do some uh, mukbang, some cooking videos. Most recently, he's been doing a whole bunch of cool aquaponic videos on his new aquaponic system. So if any of you guys are into that stuff or hydroponics, you could be checking him out and see what he's doing with his system. Really cool stuff. Check him out. Shout out number two, Deborah Cabasa. Actually, she does a lot of shout outs herself as well. Um, she generally tends to do like at least one a week where she'll do like a whole list of names of good channels to go check out. But she also does uh, lots of those haul videos, so thrift store hauls and things like that, showing things that she got and also lots of DIY videos. She's really cool at the different things that she creates uh, for her house and stuff. So if you're into any of those DIY things for your house, most more with like crafty things, you know, not like building huge old uh, tables and different things like that. That's not her DIY area. She does more really cool craft DIY stuff. Uh, and yeah, I really like her stuff. Black and tan. Not, not the beer thingy, black and tan. No, this is the channel, black and tan. I can't remember exactly what his breed is. He looks like he's a Doberman, Doberman mix of some kind. He definitely has that look of a, a, a Doberman overall, but maybe not exactly completely Doberman. You'll have to let me know, but his name's Bruce. He's a cool dog. He's recently been through some tough stuff, had to get a little bit of surgery done. Yeah, if you want to check out some cool dog videos, go give him a look. Well, that would bring us to shout out number four. And this one's going out to Turnings by Turner. And this guy is one heck of a craftsman. He does all these really cool things with wood primarily. Builds things um, uh, with other uh, items in mind too. So it's like... He does combination, but I, I, I can't explain it properly. I have to go see his channel and find out. Oh my god. But he's like made shaving kits, hummingbird feeders, pill boxes, saxophone mouthpieces. <laughs> I mean, all kinds of things. Aromatherapy necklace. I mean, come on. How cool is that? So he makes all these really cool things, primarily with um, some kind of a wood base that he creates to mix in with the other parts. So check it out, really cool things that he makes. Shout out number five, Out West Homestead. This one's pretty clear as far as what it says on the tin, obviously, they're a home, bunch of homesteaders uh, and they actually do a little some shout outs. They go over their food forest and all different kinds of things with their place, things with birds. They had a little snake action recently. So all those fun things that happen with homesteaders. You like homesteaders? Check them out. It's the final shout out. Da, 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 da. Final shout out time. Well, this one's going out to my new gal, Liz Brousseau. Brousseau. I love that name, Brousseau. And uh, she actually does YouTube tips. Um, she's like in a, a real life job and stuff, did, did primarily things with uh, marketing and stuff already, and has started doing YouTube tips. And she's got some really interesting, unique insights. That I haven't seen a lot of other people who do tips before. That's what I really like most about her and why I've really started glomming onto her channel. She has a unique edge, really has a, a special uh, way of looking at things and gives you some interesting uh, different insights on how to approach uh, your tags and how to approach um, marketing your channel to different people to help try and grow you. So if you're looking for new ways to grow, Liz Brousseau is the way to go. See that? I rhymed. I can do that. Well, all right, my friends, that's it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed all my little tea advice. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, go check out those channels. Please take care of each other, and you guys have a wonderful day.